بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Today's session is about the pillar or the article of faith, belief in the messengers. Uh, the pillar of belief in the messengers entails that we believe that Allah Azawajal has selected these messengers from amongst normal human beings. And they were simply selected by Allah Azawajal as a favor upon them from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Allah yastafi min al-malaikati rusula wa min al-nas. Allah chooses messengers from both angels and humans and people. And Allah Azza wa Jal has set certain tasks for these uh, messengers of His. Uh, the first and foremost, the most important, is that they convey the message of Allah Azza wa Jal to the people they were sent to. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal said in the Quran, Ya ayyuha rasulu بَلِّغْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ O Messenger, convey everything revealed to you from your Lord. Imam al-Zuhri, may Allah have mercy on him, said, The message comes from Allah, and the task of the Messenger is to convey it, and our responsibility is to respond to it and submit to the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, conveying the message of Allah Azza wa Jal uh, is done by one of two things. The first one is to recite and verbally say the revelation that was sent down upon the messengers, alayhim salatu wassalam, perfectly and completely without additions or deletions, without increasing or decreasing in any way or form. And the second is to clarify the revelations that were sent upon them by Allah Azza wa Now this clarification can be done by one or two things, either verbal explanations or practical explanations. And if uh, the brothers and the sisters recollect, we said in one of the uh, previous sessions that for our Prophet Wasallam, the Sunnah is either something he said or something he did or something he saw and he approved of. So these are different levels of sunnah, if you may, and they are also means of clarification to the commandments of Allah Azza wa The second task is to call people to Allah Azza wa it's, it's not enough to convey the, uh, the message itself, but they actually had to call people and convince them. Of course, the end result is in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal, but they had to strive in their da'wah, calling people to Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, to single out Allah Azza wa Jal in worship. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَجِتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ We have certainly sent into every nation a messenger saying, worship Allah and avoid Taghut. Taghut uh, is an Arabic word used to uh, talk about anything or anyone that becomes the source of legislation or the source of do's and don'ts to the, to, to the human being, to the, to the slave of Allah. Azzawajal. Whatever that is, whatever is being worshipped or obeyed besides Allah Azza wa Jal in do's and don'ts, and don'ts is called taghut. The third task is to purify the souls and the hearts of the followers of these messengers. Allah Azza wa Jal sent these messengers to guide people, show them the way to the truth, to the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, and to bring them out of the darkness of ignorance, the darkness of shirk, 
the darkness of disbelief into the light of belief and into the light of Islam. When this happens, when they are guided to the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, then their souls and their hearts become purified. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْ أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ We have sent Musa alayhi salatu wasalam with our signs, evidences, ordering him to say or to do the following, lead your people from darkness or out of darkness into light. Now taking people out of darkness into the light of faith, can be achieved by one of three matters. Teaching them the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal and purifying their souls and making them aware of who their Lord is, who is the one they are commanded to worship is subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bringing good news or glad tidings and warning is another task by, for the messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal. And calling people to Allah Azza wa Jal is always coupled with this matter because the nature of mankind is that they don't always go with glad tidings because they relax and they don't always go with warnings and threats because they might become rebellion. So Allah Azza wa Jal, and this is very noticed in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Azza wa Jal at times warns and at other times uh, bring, brings glad tidings and good news to the people. Allah says, رُسُنًا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ لِأَنْ لَا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُلِ We sent messengers delivering good news and warnings. So humanity will have no excuse before Allah Azza wa Jal after the coming of the messengers. So they bring good news, glad tidings to the pious and the obedient. Those who believed and abided by the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal adhered to the instructions of the messengers, alayhim salatu wassalam. Good news about a blissful life in this worldly life and a blissful life in the hereafter. As Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Whoever acts righteously, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا He or she, man or a woman, female, male or female, وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ Whilst believing, فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا We will make him lead a blissful life. And then in the hereafter, وَلَنَجِزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَنُ And we will reward them in the hereafter based on the best of what they used to do. And on the other hand, they would threaten and warn those who disobey or reject the message of Allah. Establishing evidence against people. Allah Azza wa Jal, out of his wisdom and out of his mercy, sent the messengers with evidences, with miracles, with signs, with proofs, confirming their truthfulness and honesty and the soundness of the message they are conveying. So that people would not come on the day of judgment and say, we didn't know. If Allah Azza wa Jal did not send any messengers, then people would come on the day of judgment and they would say, how can you punish us when you did not tell us what you wanted from us? You did not send us anything guiding us to the right way that leads us to you. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal sends these messengers to establish such evidence so there is no such excuse for people. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَوْ أَنَّا أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِهِ لَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا لَوْ لَا أَرْسَلْتَ إِلَيْنَا رَسُولًا فَنَتَّبِعَ آيَاتِكَ If we had destroyed them, 
with a punishment before him, the messenger. They would have said, our Lord, why did you not send us a messenger so we could have followed your teachings, your instructions? The sixth task is to correct deviations. Now, deviations can be in belief, in manners and morals, in behavior. Uh, and Allah Azza wa Jal gave us, gave us examples, different examples in the Quran about these different examples of corrections or reformations that were done by the messengers. For example, uh, Prophet Nuh and Ibrahim corrected something with regards to faith and belief because their people were worshipping idols. So they came and corrected that. They were calling people to the correct path of worshipping Allah alone and abandoning the idol worshipping they used to do. Hud, alayhi salatu was salam, did something him and Salih regarding behaviors. Uh, the people of Hud were arrogant people. The people of Salih spread corruptions, a corruption upon the earth. The people of Lut, Lut alayhi salatu was salam, corrected something regarding the manners of people. Because sodomy was something that was widespread amongst his people. So he came to correct that. Shu'ayb alayhi salatu was salam, on the other hand, was uh, at, at his time and amongst his people, uh, they were cheating. They were given less than what the measure or the scale uh, is supposed to. And he, was, uh, he had uh, corrected that and called them to abandon such uh, immoral behavior, uh, which is cheating. So these crimes, they're clear deviation from the right path, from the straight path of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why messengers, the messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal were sent to uh, make the path of Allah Azza wa Jal clear to people and correct anything any deviation in any of the aspects mentioned uh, as examples in this in this point. The final point I would like to address here is politics. The messengers, in in our terms and contemporary terms, were the politicians. They were actually the rulers of their people. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal. Address Dawood alayhi salatu was salam saying, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ardi fahkum bayna nasi bil haqqa. O Dawood, we instructed him saying, O Dawood, we have surely made you an authority in the land, so judge between people with the truth. Allah Azza wa Jal made him the ruler. And in the books of Al Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the children of Israel were ruled and governed by their prophets. Whenever a prophet died, another prophet came to them. What are the qualities of these messengers? The first one is that they were humans, normal human beings. The polytheists, when they were objecting uh, to the messengers sent to them, their main objection was that you are human. As Allah Azza wa says, uh, informing us of what they used to say to the messengers. They said, إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُنَا تُرِيدُونَ أَنْ تَصُدُّونَ عَمَّا كَانَ يَعْبُدُ آبَاؤُنَا You are not but men like us who wish to avert us from what are Fathers were worshipping. So the messengers confirmed that and responded saying, Their messengers said, We are indeed only humans like you, but Allah favors whoever He chooses 
of his slaves. The second quality is that they were trustworthy. The saying of Allah, Inni lakum rasulun ameen, I am truly a trustworthy messenger to you, was something that was said by many of the messengers to their people. Nuh said it to his people. Hud said it to his people. Salih said it to his people. Lut said it to his people. Shu'ayb said it. They all said the exact same thing. And this is a major quality in these that distinct distinguished these messengers from other people. The Prophet ﷺ, before he was commissioned as a messenger and a prophet, was called a sadiqul amin, the truthful and trustworthy. So this is a major quality Allah Azza wa instilled in the messengers he sent to people. Allah Azza wa Jal distinguished some messengers over others. For example, Allah Azza wa Jal made Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam as a khalil. He took them as a khalil, which means an intimate friend. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was given something different. Allah spoke to him directly. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam was given a different issue. He was a child of a mother without a father. All, the, all of these matters are matters that Allah Azza wa distinguishes messengers from people and from amongst themselves as well. Another quality is that, and this responds to some people who came after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and let me mention it and then I'll say. They are, or they were men, males that is, and they were from the cities. So this rules out them being women, because there were women after the Prophet Sallallahu died who claimed to be messengers. And they were not Bedouins from the desert, meaning, well, let, let's see what Allah Azza wa Jal says. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِيَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَى We sent not before you as messengers except men to whom we have revealed from among the people of the cities. رِجَالًا Men. Ibn Kathir said, the belief of Ahl sunnah is that women can never be messengers or prophets. There were, there were no women as prophets or messengers sent by Allah Azza wa From the people of the, city, the cities, Qatada said, this is because usually the people of the city are more for, forbearing than uh, the, the, the Bedouins. And they're more knowledgeable than them. And thus Allah Azza wa Jal selected his messengers from them. Uh, another quality is that they're infallible, especially regarding the message they conveyed from Allah Azza wa Jal. And with regards to sins as well. Uh, another distinct quality is that they were very, very patient. You know, calling people to do something contrary to what they believe can result, and it did of course, in intimidating them, angering them, and causing them to take an offensive stance against you. And that's why the saying of some of the scholars, people love people who are righteous to themselves. But they start hating them when they start attempting to make people righteous. Because when you're good to yourself, people say, oh, nice man. Or what a lovely sister. But when you start seeing haram or something wrong, something against the sunnah, and you start saying, oh, brother, you know, you're not supposed to do that. 
sister, your hijab is not uh, correct. You can't wear hijab like this. It can't be tight. It can't be colorful. You can't wear makeup. You. Some of the sisters would look at you like, oh, okay. People don't like to receive instructions that will make them go against what they love and what they want. This is in general. However, there are people, and thus we have followers to the messengers. There are people who accept advice and uh, adhere. So, against those who don't, there was harm that was done. They were touched by a lot of harm. They went through a lot of hardships and difficulties. Our Prophet ﷺ was beaten, was choked, was cursed, badmouthed ﷺ. He went through a lot. He said ﷺ, ولم أحد. What the, the extent of harm I have received or have been afflicted with, or touched with, is something that none before me had received, alayhi salatu wasalam, or was touched with. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal addressed him, saying, فَاصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَ أُولُ الْعَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ So persevere patiently, as those before you, with strong determination, persevere. Now, what's the focal point of the mission of the messengers of Allah? Their main mission revolved around one issue. Singling out Allah Azza wa Jal in worship and abandoning anything else or anyone else in worship other than him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ We never sent a messenger before you without revealing to him to say, there is no God worthy of worship except me, except Allah. So worship me alone. This is the major task of these messengers. Servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. Establish the servitude in the hearts of the people. Change in any shirk, any form of shirk. Re removing that and making them people upon pure monotheism, Islamic monotheism. So, the messengers called their followers or their people to submit to Allah, obey Allah Azza wa Jal, and surrender fully to His instructions and commands. And this is why we, we see that this concept is mentioned in the Quran in many places. It's full of that. The issue of singling out Allah Azza wa Jal. In worship. And it was done in a way that included in it the concepts of love of Allah, hope in Allah, fear in Allah, trust in Allah, reliance uh, on Allah Azza wa Jal, in order to make the relationship between the slave and his Lord uh, based on possessing beautiful feelings from the slave towards, to, towards his Lord. It's not just, he is my Lord who created and I need to worship. No, there, the, the, the way it was presented in the Quran and the Sunnah, uh, especially by frequently mentioning uh, the names of Allah and the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, this touches the heart. It makes you closer to your Creator. It makes you love your Creator. And on the other hand, it, it makes you fear His anger and His punishment. So this, the, this balance that was struck in 
in the feelings, the slaves of Allah or the, belief, the, the people who were called to Allah had by the usage of different qualities and attributes of Allah and names of Allah Azza wa Jal created such feelings in the hearts of the people and made them attached to Allah Azza wa Jal and thus they worshipped him with full love, having full hope in him whilst making a balance of fearing to have shortcomings or to err or sin. Their legislations, the messengers' legislations. Allah Azza wa Jal informed us that they differed with regards to haram and halal, what's lawful and what's not lawful, the, the do's and the don'ts. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرْعَةً وَمِنْ هَاجَةً to each of you, we have prescribed a code of law and a way of life. So their legislations changed depending on the best benefit that was achieved to them by certain legislations. So Allah Azza wa Jal would have legislated something to these people different than the followers of another messenger. And then Allah Azza wa Jal concluded all of that and overruled all these previous uh, legislations by the legislation uh, brought forth by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through the Quran and the Sunnah. Ibn Taymiyyah Rahmatullahi Alayhi said, the religion of all the prophets and the messengers was one. It was Islam. Islam in its general definition. Islam in the, defin in the general definition means to fully submit to Allah Azza wa Jal, obey and worship only Him. To fully submit and obey and to only worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, so the, the religion of all the prophets uh, were the same. However, their legislations differed. They differed from time to time. As a matter of fact, they differed at times for the same messenger, depending on what is the best for the followers of that messenger. An example, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa In the beginning of his message, والسلام, the direction of Salah was towards Jerusalem. And then later it was changed and it was made to be facing the Kaaba in Mecca. So this was a legislation that was changed within the same era for the same messenger. And this is just as an example. What is the number we're talking about. How many prophets and messengers were sent by Allah Azza wa Well, their number is a lot. However, Allah Azza wa did not mention all of them. As he says in the Quran, وَرُسُلًا He was addressing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَرُسُلًا قَدْ قَصَصْنَاهُمْ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَرُسُلًا لَمْ نَقْصُصْهُمْ عَلَيْكَ There are messengers whose stories we have told you already and others we have not. So the, the, the verse, this verse, clarifies that Allah Azza wa did not inform Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the stories of all the messengers he had sent Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And this includes, of course, the number of people. Ibn Kathir, however, uh, in the Quran, searched and found that the number of the messengers named in the Quran by Allah Azza wa were only 25. Does this affect our, uh, the soundness of our belief in messengers as a, as a pillar or article of faith? No, it doesn't. What you're commanded to do is to believe in the ones who were named by name. And the ones who were not named to believe in them in general, that Allah had sent other messengers. So we believe in general in any messenger Allah Azza wa Jal had sent. Ibn Hajar, Rahmatullah Alihi said, this concealing of the number 
the total number of the messengers, indicates that general belief in all messengers is enough without having the details. Unless there are messengers whose name or names were mentioned, then we need to believe in these by detail, according to the details we received. Name and any other details Allah Azza wa Jal sent to us or conveyed to us in the Quran. Another uh, important issue with regards to messengers is that we said that they were human when we mentioned the qualities of the uh, of the messengers. But Muhammad وسلم, was sent to the jinn. So this proves that there, there was no jinn as a messenger.